said Ted Art. Yes, we've gotten fidget spinner mad in our house and have made all these different fidget spinners. As requested, we've also created a pattern, um, so keep watching for that. And uh, we'll show you how to make this a tri pattern. Now, I just want to very quickly say these are homemade fidget spinners, so by definition, they're not going to be as good or spin as long as a shop board fidget spinner that has ball bearings in it. This uses no ball bearings, which makes it a really cheap and easy craft to do at home or at school. Also remember, because these are homemade and made from recycled materials, they will not last as long as a shop bought fidget spinner. It might fall apart a little bit, ours have done. Don't panic, take your pieces and just glue them back together again. Just that's the nature of making a homemade one. But they still think they're really great fun to do and they also make a great science fair project and I'll talk about that a little bit in a minute as well. So come on then, let's stop waffling and get on with it. <laughs> So as before, we will need some cardboard, some coins, a toothpick, and then some cutting and gluing devices of different sorts. Now, very quickly before I get started, please listen. I think this will be really useful. Um, I've had a couple of questions. I've had questions about, does it need coins? Now, if you're gonna do this as a science fair project or a STEAM experiment, here's something to think about when you're experimenting. One is, Different types of glue are stronger and weaker, so you could explore which glue works better or not. That's the first thing. The second thing you can explore is, is whether you need coins or not. Does it spin as well with or without coins? I can give you the answer. The more coins or the more weight you have, the faster it will spin because you're gonna create centrifugal forces that help turn it. So the coins are about the weight that help it spin. And then the third thing that's sort of quite pertinent is the actual, if you want, bearing. So how can you, why does this one not spin as fast or as long as the shop bought ones? And the answer basically is friction because there's more friction with these ones because they're not, the ball bearings are designed to have very, very low friction. And when you're creating your own, uh, these kind of ones, you can even hear it, listen. You can hear it scuffing the cardboard. So the friction on this is higher. So for example, on this one, the friction is even higher. And that's basically because when I was making my holes and pushing through the cardboard, I created a little lip and the lip is what's catching on the circular um, sort of discs on the outside. So those are things for you to think about. And if you do want to use this as an experiment and you wanna have a go and create different ones, this is a really great um, little sort of science fair project where you can look at um, centrifugal forces where you can look at friction and you can also look at properties of materials and how strong glue is. So now it's time to make our fidget spinner. Now the um, tri fidget spinners, these two are exactly the same. They do spin the same amount, um, but I decided to do two different patterns, which you can now, <laughs> there's links below so how to get them. You can now get a simple, very simple downloadable of the three different fidget spinners that we've made here on the channel. Today I thought I'd make it slightly arty as well. So we've looked at a bit of science and we're now gonna look at a little bit of art. So I'm gonna create a white one. This is a white piece of cardboard that I've recycled and I think it just fits my um, fidget spinner. And I'm gonna draw around the outside and cut it out.
So this cardboard is quite stiff, so I literally only need one. With all of these, I've used two, so they're kind of the cereal packet cardboard, it's quite bendy, and I've used two, and I've stuck them together using a glue stick, because a glue stick's really good for this kind of paper, and it makes it stick quite well. But, like I've said, this is quite stiff, so one is enough. I'm going to use this later for my um, little holder. So the next thing we want to do is to decorate <laughs> our fidget spinner. In fact, I'm thinking about which side to decorate. I think I'm going to decorate the bottom and then we're going to glue the, um, the coins on the top. we go so that's how quick it was to decorate our fidget spinner turn it round and we're gonna glue on our three pennies um, now like I've said before the stronger the glue the better some of you have asked about hot glue um, I personally don't think hot glue sticks as well um, hot glue can uh, I just, just think it peels off but it's up to you if you've got hot glue gun try it out um, and see, I think if you do use a hot glue gun, you basically just need to put lots and lots and lots of it all around it and kind of encase it a little bit. I've also had a suggestion, which I thought was a great idea of, um, you could use almost like paper mache over the top with a bit of tissue paper. That's a really good idea. That would definitely make sure it doesn't come loose. Um, yeah, so there's lots of things you can experiment, but I think a strong glue, this one's not bad, although sometimes it does come off and then you have to glue it back on again. I've also got this glue. Uh, which is a bit like E3000 and with this glue actually they stay on really really well so it's, it's really up to you to um, come up with a glue that works for you. Now I'm going to let that dry and then we're going to come back and we're going to do the mechanism but I'm just going to quickly cut out two circles for the holding mechanism and then once it's all dry we'll um, obviously come back. Okay, our coins are pretty dry, not, not fully dry, you can still see it's a bit wet, but it's enough that we can handle it. Now, one thing I wanted to say is whilst it dries, sometimes my coins start sliding off for whatever reason. So what you need to do is you need to push it back up. Now, the next thing we want to do is you take your um, template, you fold it, and you fold it, and that gives you a point in the middle. You can see I've already created a hole there. And that helps you pinpoint the center of your spinning toy. So I take my needle, I push it through just to mark it. There we go. I've got a little hole. This also applies to this template of course. You fold it and you fold it and also to the template for these ones. Okay, So it's really important to get it into the center. And again if you're doing this as a science experiment or a science fair project, this is something where you can discuss about the forces and also about it spinning neatly. And that is that um, if this hole isn't in the middle, then your spinning toy will not spin properly. Now I'm trying to make the hole as big as possible so that when my toothpick goes in, it's nice and loose <laughs> and it's got a nice sort of axis to go around. Now I want to make two more points about this, this hole. So this is nice and loose, great. Um, somebody suggested putting in a little, uh, you know, from a plastic, from, from a, um, a pen, or like a little straw or something, put it in there to kind of reduce the friction because the cardboard can be create the friction. That's a good idea. So you could experiment with a little straw, um, you know, maybe a straw that you get out of like those small juice cartons. And the other thing I wanted to say is, do you see here when you look at it sideways, there's a bit sticking up here. Now that bit sticking up could cause friction against our little discs. So that's something you can consider. Either you try and flatten it back down, <laughs> but you need to have it neat, or you try and cut it off. Or later when you put the discs on you make sure that they're far away enough that they don't rub so that's where the friction comes into it and that's something that will slow your spinner down so that's a lot of talk I know but I do think it's worth it now the next thing you need to do is you need to find the center of your um, your discs now you do need the discs I've tried doing it without the disc just a toothpick and I just found just holding the toothpick creates a wobble whilst by having the discs they kind of help smoothen it a little bit and kind of puts it back into place when it kind of wobbles a bit all over the place. 
Now with the hole for the holder, you don't want this too big because you want it to be nice and stiff on your toothpick. Can you see that feels quite stiff, doesn't it? So you push it right to the end, then you push it onto the other one, make sure there's a hole. Ah, don't bend it too much because you also want it to look nice. Here we go. Push it through. That's a bit of a sticky glue, but this is enough for me to get going. Push this on this end. Now, people asked again about hot glue guns. I think the hot glue gun is not strong enough for the coins. The hot glue gun probably is okay for the this holding mechanism. Still not totally strong. So, I mean, I prefer using the glue I've been using, but you know, if you wanna use a hot glue gun for this bit, because you may be doing this as a library project, that's fair enough. So I'm gonna get my glue. <laughs> Here you go, I think I used the other glue last time actually, but I, I do like this one because it's really nice and strong. But strong PVA glue is, is great. I'm gonna pop it on top pop some around here. To be honest, you can probably get away with no glue um, or maybe some tape even. So do experiment. And then I place it carefully onto a tin like this one. And the glue, basically that means the um, my spinning mechanism can dry, but also the, the coins can finish off drying as well. And then that's basically it, well, almost it. We'll have to do a bit of trimming at the end, but we're gonna let that dry now. That'll probably take an hour to fully dry. And then we'll uh, finish off the very, very last bit and then we're done. Isn't it great? I'm so excited. We have one very last thing to do, which is, now it's almost, oh, it's a bit wet there, but it's pretty much dry, is to just nip off a little bit of your toothpick. I've been a bit impatient and didn't wait for that to dry. You can use scissors as well, to be honest, or you can get an adult to help you. I just find it easier with this. And then here comes a moment of truth. Whilst this is still drying, um, patient me. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? Now, as mentioned, oopsie, um, this tri spinner and that shape tri spinner are exactly the same. Um, it's just a preference, matter of preference. Uh, and that's it. <laughs> now remember uh, to add this to your playlist, like, comment and subscribe. And of course, we'd love to see you here again soon. Bye.